say you told us you traveled and it took thousands of light years to get here. Crash. In the vast expanse of the universe, the idea of extraterrestrial life has long fascinated and terrified humanity. Throughout history, there have been individuals who have claimed to hail from distant worlds, sparking curiosity, fear, and skepticism. While their claims remain contentious and often unverifiable, they serve as reminders of humanity's enduring curiosity about the mysteries of the cosmos. What exactly were these encounters? How did they affect the thinking of the human race? Join us as we delve into the stories of 20 terrifying people who claim to be from space. Number 20. Nina Kulagina, born in 1926 in Leningrad. Now St. Petersburg's Ninil Sergeyevna Kulagina joined the Red Army at age 14. Kulagina served as a tank radio sergeant until she was wounded during the final stages of World War I. After the war, she started a family and was virtually unheard of until the mid-1960s when her powers developed enough for her to become a sensation in the Soviet Union. During interviews, Kulagina said that she realized she had abilities when she noticed that everyday objects would move by themselves whenever she was angry. Kulagina claimed that for her psychokinetic powers to have any effect, she required a period of meditation during which her thoughts would clear. When she felt a sharp pain in her spine and her vision would blur, she knew she was ready. During that time, it was reported that as many as 40 scientists, including two Nobel laureates, had examined the woman and deemed her psychic powers genuine. Her most famous test happened in the 1970s, when scientists wanted to see if Kulagina had any powers over animate matter, such as living cells, tissue, and organs. A frog's heart was placed in saline solution and kept beating with the aid of two electrodes delivering a weak electrical current. The scientists present during the experiment said Kulagina first made the heart beat faster, then slower, and, through an intense thought process, stopped it altogether. Thankfully, she was unable to perform the same feat on a human heart. Kulagina said that any attempt to control certain parts of a human being ended badly for her, usually in the form of extreme physical discomfort. Despite these outrageous claims, Nina Kulagina was never proven a fraud and no one ever caught her cheating, despite claims that her powers were nothing more than sleight of hand and cheap tricks. Number 19. George Adamski George Adamski was a Polish-American author who became well-known in ufology circles and, to some extent, in popular culture after displaying numerous photographs he claimed were of alien spacecraft in the 1940s and 1950s. On October 9, 1946, during a meteor shower, Adamski and his friends claimed to have seen a gigantic cigar-shaped mothership while camping at Palomar Gardens. Adamski photographed what he believed was the 1946 cigar-shaped mothership moving in front of the moon above Palomar Gardens in early 1947. Adamski claimed to have observed 184 UFOs pass over Palomar Gardens one evening in the summer of 1947, following the first highly publicized UFO sightings in the United States. Adamski's claims include that government and science had confirmed the reality of UFOs two years prior by radar surveillance of a 700-foot-long spaceship on the other side of the moon. Mainstream ufologists were almost uniformly hostile to Adamski, believing that his and similar contact stories were fraudulent and that the contact was making serious UFO investigators look ridiculous. On May 29, 1950, Adamski captured a snapshot of six unexplained objects in the sky that appeared to be flying in formation. The same UFO photograph was displayed on an August 1978 commemorative stamp issued by Grenada to commemorate the Year of UFOs. Number 18. Applewhite Marshall Applewhite was the leader of the Heaven's Gate religious cult in Texas. He was a self-proclaimed prophet, drawing rhetoric from science fiction and scripture. He led his group to commit mass suicide in 1997 in hopes of being lifted into a spaceship. His close partner, Bonnie Lou Nettles, decided they were the two mentioned in the Book of Revelation meant for an important mission. They decided that they were the two mentioned in the Book of Revelation and that they were on an important spiritual mission. They thought that they came from what they termed the level above human, a physical and literal version of heaven in outer space 
and were sent to help others reach this next level. To them, the human body was just a vehicle, and to ascend from this world people had to separate from all that was human in themselves, including their earthly needs and desires. They believed that a UFO would soon take them back to the next level after completing their mission. The discovery of the Hale-Bopp Comet in 1995 drew the interest of Applewhite. He saw the comet as a sign that a spaceship was coming to take them to the next level. By 1996, the group was operating a successful computer business and lived in an exclusive neighborhood in Rancho Santa Fe, California. They also produced more videos encouraging others to leave with them, saying it was the last chance to evacuate Earth before it's recycled. As the Hale-Bopp Comet drew closer to Earth in 1997, Applewhite and his followers prepared to make their exit from this world. On March 21st, they ate a last supper of sorts at a restaurant, all ordering the same thing. Turkey pot pie, cheesecake with blueberries, and iced tea. A day or two later, when the comet was closest to the planet, Applewhite and his followers took their own lives by drinking a mixture of vodka and barbiturates. On March 26th, the bodies were found all dressed the same with covered purple shrouds. When the news of Heaven's Gate deaths broke, many people were shocked and horrified by the mass suicide. The media showed clips from a rambling video that Applewhite made shortly before the suicides, explaining their mission and encouraging others to follow. Members also recorded exit videos, but these did little to comfort the families of the followers or help the world at large understand their drastic, unfathomable actions. Number 17. Betty and Barney Hill On a cold September night in 1961, Betty and Barney Hill found themselves in a game of cat and mouse. The couple were driving through a deserted, winding New Hampshire road for hours without a witness in sight, convinced a terrifying UFO was circling above them. When they got home, they felt disoriented and dazed. Barney's shoes were scuffed, Betty's dress was ripped, and neither felt they could recall what exactly happened that night. In a search for answers, they enlisted A and their infamous sessions saw them both conjure bizarre stories about being abducted by gray, bug-eyed extraterrestrials. Their admissions made them famous as the first Americans to claim being abducted by aliens, but the next decades erupted into a twisted saga of fame, conspiracy theories, and death. UFOs have become interwoven right with various conspiracies about politics, science, medicine, health, even religion. Their case is a pivot point. He told DailyMail.com. In a book published five years later, Barney said the two embarked on their road trip spontaneously as a way to steal a quick retreat from their jobs as a post office worker and child welfare officer. They embarked on a trip through Montreal and Niagara Falls, something of a long awaited honeymoon for the couple over a year after their wedding. But as they drove back on the third night, they reached a diner in Vermont where Barney decided to push ahead to stay in front of a storm and aim to reach home in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, at around 3 a.m. While winding through the country roads, an ominous light emerged in the sky, described as a falling star that appeared to grow ever brighter. So the story goes, the object was an anomalous spinning face, with explaining the nonsensical meeting, the Hills thought it best to keep quiet. Their memories were almost completely gone, and no one had ever claimed to have experienced anything similar before. Simon spent months piecing their story together, finding they both had oddly similar experiences. They said they were placed on examination tables in the UFO before being subjected to scientific experiments while the aliens stripped them, plucked their hair, took clippings of their nails, and scraped their skin. Betty also claimed to have been shown an intricate star map that she knew from memory. When asked to produce it later, she identified the star system Zeta Reticuli, around 39 light years from Earth, as her abductor's home planet. Their story was picked up by a Boston reporter and spread like wildfire, propelling the hills into fame and fascination. In 1975, a made-for-TV movie starring James Earl Jones and Estelle Parsons was made about their story. Number 16. Greta Woodrue Woodrue claimed to first come into contact with extraterrestrial intelligence in 1976. In her 1981 book, On a Slide of Light, she described her encounters as taking place initially under laboratory conditions with a leading medical doctor and scientist. 
It was her impression that once she left the lab, she would also leave the extraterrestrial intelligence behind, but this was not to be the case. Once she exercised her free will in allowing extraterrestrials into her life, they quickly became a regular part of her experienced reality. She could be sitting at her desk at, say, 10 a.m., getting ready to phone a client about a prospect. She dialed the number and once again glanced at the clock, and to her confusion, it would read 10.45. Woodrow attributed these time discrepancies to a continuing dialogue with extraterrestrial intelligence transcending time and space and the third dimension. The beings with which Woodrow claimed she had contact were supposedly from another solar system located astronomically on the Messier list at M92. The place of origin, Woodrow claimed, was called Ogata, part of a binary or twin star system, which comprises what they call a Jorpa, and we call a solar system, of five planets in another galaxy. Woodrow claimed the five planets were called Ogata, Arshan, Arka, Menon, and Chauvi. Number 15. Vinny O, a 22-year-old male has been making waves online over claims to be an alien. The girl whose name is Vinny O has spent over $50,000 on over 100 surgeries and cosmetic procedures. Vinny is currently looking into removing genitalia, belly button, and nipples entirely. All of these surgeries would sum up to a hefty $160,000 in medical bills according to Mail Online. I don't see why I shouldn't have my genitals completely removed and have nothing down there," Vinny said of his decision to go under the knife. According to him, the overall image he wanted to do is an alien. He wanted to be a hybrid, not male or female, and he has always wanted to be sexless and genderless since he was 17. He also said that he had been going to doctors to see if it was possible, but has had no luck yet. The young artist began the transformation at the age of 17 by first getting lip fillers. Vinny then underwent a lot of medical procedures, including getting two rhinoplasty surgeries, having multiple cheeks, injecting brow bone fillers, and undergoing other reconstructive surgeries. Number 14, Man from Taurid. In the middle of a scorching July day in 1954, an enigmatic traveler stepped into the corridors of Haneda Airport, Tokyo. Seemingly ordinary, yet irrefutably perplexing, this figure's appearance bore no unusual marks. A bearded, suited gentleman with a subtle air of foreignness. He conversed with the fluency of the French and the grace of a Japanese native. But here, the ordinary narrative takes a spine-tingling twist. As the traveler slid his passport across the counter, the immigration officer's incredulity surged. For the passport proclaimed he was from the mysterious land of Torred, a place that, as far as the officials knew, had no place in the world's atlas. Upon his arrival at Haneda Airport, the man's passport presented a perplexing question. It indicated his origin as Taurid, a place unknown to everyone involved. Challenged by immigration officials, his insistence on Taurid's existence spanning nearly a millennium only deepened the enigma. Sensing that something was amiss, authorities secured him in a nearby hotel assigning vigilant guards to prevent any escape. The next morning, things became even more strange. The hotel room stood empty, and the man from Torred had inexplicably vanished. This confounding disappearance, with no explanation, has invited speculation from conspiracy theorists about everything from parallel dimensions to an elaborate trick. But it's much more likely that he simply escaped at the right moment. However, True believers haven't ruled out the dimension-hopping theory. Number 13. Calvin Parker What is certain about the night of October 11, 1973, is this. When Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker Jr. arrived at the Sheriff's Department in Pascagoula, Missa, they were frantic. They told authorities they had just been abducted by aliens. Each had a puncture wound in one arm. Police tried to catch them in a lie, but it didn't work. Both men later passed polygraph tests. In 1973, Hickson was Parker's foreman at a shipyard. The two had gone fishing after work at an abandoned boat launch and were still there after the sun went down. I was just getting ready to get some more bait, Hickson told the Washington Post in 1975, when I heard a kind of zipping sound. I looked up and saw a blue flashing light. Calvin turned around too. We saw a 30-foot-long object with a little dome on top. As it hovered just above the ground, Three small creatures emerged, also hovering, he said. The men were suddenly paralyzed. 
The creatures grabbed them with pincer-type claws and pulled them toward the object, he said. I floated inside, Parker told the Biloxi Sun Herald in 2018. Hickson said they were subjected to a physical examination by something that looked like a big eye, a constant mechanical sound buzzing the whole time. And then they were dropped off, right back in the dark delta where they started. Hickson found Parker standing up, arms raised to the sky and screaming, he told the Post. They ran for help. At first, sheriff's investigators thought the men had been drunk or lying. After interviewing the men, they left the room with a recorder secretly taping, hoping to catch the pair dropping the act once they left, but they didn't. They kept on talking about what they had seen and how scared they were. We did everything we knew to try to break their stories, Jackson County Sheriff's Captain Glenn Ryder told the Post in 1975. If they were lying to me, they should be in Hollywood. Number 12. Ashtar Galactic Command the Ashtar Galactic Command and UFO Activity The Ashtar Galactic Command, a group believed to consist of beings from other planets, has garnered attention for its reported involvement in UFO activity. While some dismiss these claims as mere speculation, others insist they have encountered beings from this command. UFO sightings, often described as strange lights or objects defying known laws of physics, have been reported worldwide for decades. Some attribute these sightings to spacecraft piloted by members of the Ashtar Galactic Command. Despite efforts to explain away many sightings, some remain unexplained, adding fuel to the belief in extraterrestrial visitors. One notable incident involving the Ashtar Galactic Command occurred when they allegedly interrupted a television news broadcast. According to reports, a message purportedly from the command briefly replaced the regular programming delivering a message of peace and unity before abruptly ending. While some view this as a hoax or a case of signal interference, others interpret it as evidence of the command's existence and their desire to communicate with humanity. Believers in the Ashtar Galactic Command claim to have received messages from these beings, offering guidance and warnings about potential dangers to our planet. Skeptics, however, demand concrete evidence to support such claims, arguing that without tangible proof, belief in extraterrestrial involvement is mere speculation. Number 11. Claude Maurice Marcel Vorilhan Claude Maurice Vorilhan, also known as Rail, claims to have had encounters with UFOs and extraterrestrial beings. He says these experiences inspired him to start a movement called the Raelian Movement. According to Vorilhan, he was visited by an alien named Yahweh in 1973 who told him about humanity's origins and future. Vorilhan says he was taken aboard a spacecraft and given messages to share with the world. The Raelian movement believes that humans were created by extraterrestrial scientists called Elohim, who visited Earth in the past. They claim that these beings will return in the future to help humanity achieve peace and harmony. Number 10. Billy Meyer Billy Meyer is a Swiss national who in the 1970s claimed he had been in contact with aliens from the Pleiades star cluster and had photographs to prove it. These pictures were published in a 1979 book by former United States Air Force pilot Wendell C. Stevens. They later appeared in publicity material for the U.S. science fiction program The X-Files. Now, they are up for auction at Sotheby's in the U.S., as part of a sale dedicated to space photography. Edward Albert Billy Meyer claims he was first contacted by alien figures known as the Pleiadians at the age of five in 1942 and maintained regular contact throughout his life. Inexpertly taken and faded, the images show blurry metallic blobs hovering or floating above the mountainous Swiss countryside. Though Stevens said the images had not been doctored, other ufologists are highly skeptical about the images. Number 9. Travis Walton Travis Walton's alleged UFO sighting and subsequent abduction is one of the strangest, most credible, and most famous alien abduction stories. His experiences were the focus of the 1993 movie Fire in the Sky. Now, 39 years after the event, Walton invited the public to join him for a nighttime sky watch at the site where it all went down. Before the event, Walton said, I am kind of nervous about it because it is the first time I go back on the site at night. 
He was right to be nervous because the events that he and his six fellow crew members describe are quite frightful. In a nutshell, the men say they saw a bright light in the forest that they believe to be a fire. They rushed to the site only to find a large metallic disc-shaped object hovering above the forest floor. Walton, being a bit of a show-off when he was young, ran off to get a closer look, despite his friends calling for him to get back into the truck. The object shot out some kind of beam at him and Walton flew several feet in the air. Believing him to be dead and scared out of their wits, his co-workers took off. Once they came to their senses, they went back for Walton, but he was gone. They reluctantly reported the incident to the police, who thought they had killed Walton and made up the UFO story as a cover. Walton was gone for several days, and everyone believed him to be dead. Five days after his disappearance, Walton ended up calling his family from a payphone near where the UFO was seen. He had thought only a few hours had passed. Although he did not immediately remember what had happened to him while he was gone, Walton later began having flashbacks of bizarre events that he believed took place aboard the UFO. Number 8. Peter Faust Peter Faust, a farmer from rural Montana, had an extraordinary encounter with a UFO. One clear night while checking on his livestock, Peter noticed a strange light hovering silently above his fields. At first he thought it might be a helicopter or a drone, but as it descended closer, he realized it was something entirely different. The UFO emitted a soft hum as it landed gently on the ground, stirring up dust around it. Peter stood frozen in awe as a door slid open, revealing a bright interior. Out stepped beings unlike any he had ever seen. Tall, slender, with large heads and large almond-shaped eyes. Despite his fear, Peter felt a strange sense of calm as the beings approached him. They communicated with him telepathically, conveying messages of peace and curiosity about life on Earth. They showed him images of their distant planet and shared their advanced understanding of the universe. Peter's encounter lasted only a few minutes, but it left a profound impact on him. As the UFO lifted off and vanished into the night sky, Peter was filled with a newfound sense of wonder and a deeper appreciation for the mysteries of the cosmos. Number 7. David Huggins David Huggins, a regular guy from Georgia, and an artist, had an unforgettable encounter with a UFO extraterrestrial being that resulted in the birth of hybrid children. Late one night, while camping alone in the woods, he saw a strange light descending from the sky. As it drew nearer, David realized it was a UFO. The craft landed softly, and outstepped beings unlike anything he had ever seen. Humanoid, but with large, black eyes. They communicated with him telepathically, sharing messages of peace and enlightenment. David felt a mix of fear and fascination as they showed him images of their home planet and their advanced technology. Despite the incredulity of others, David stood by his story, sharing it in documentaries and interviews. He painted vivid depictions of his encounters, capturing the curiosity and wonder he felt. For David, the experience was life-altering, shaping his beliefs and inspiring his art. Number 6. Whitley Strieber Whitley Strieber was the author of the book Communion, detailing his experiences with alien abduction and encounters with extraterrestrial beings. There's something in the sky. There's something in my room. There's something in my head. They must be connected. That's the argument Whitley Strieber makes in Confirmation, his fifth book about extraterrestrial aliens. Its subtitle summarizes his approach to the argument, The Hard Evidence of Aliens Among Us. Strieber's hard evidence comes from three different types of experiences. Sightings of unidentified objects in the sky, stories of alien encounters or abductions, and objects removed from the bodies of people who believe they have been abducted. As he recounts each incident, he tries to reflect an air of scientific detachment. He isn't necessarily arguing that all the evidence he cites is proof that aliens walk among us. Instead, he claims he is only marshalling arguments for a concentrated research effort by the scientific community. His mask of objectivity, however, refuses to remain in place. Number 5. Nancy Leader In 1995, a woman from Wisconsin named Nancy Leader made a website called Zeta Talk to talk about how she was abducted by aliens and warned about the apocalypse from a chip the aliens implanted into her brain. Leader claimed that the aliens were warning her about the giant planet Nibiru, Planet X, 
which she said would destroy the Earth in 2003. Since then, the idea of Planet X Nibiru destroying the Earth has appeared in Doomsday Predictions in 2005, 2007, 2012, 2016, and 2017, the last time it was relevant. While it's easy to say that a once interesting idea for an astronomical anomaly became a joke after some idiots ruined any potential credibility, the idea of Planet X existing, minus the apocalypse, is still being considered in scientific circles and astronomers are still looking for it. Number 4. Valiant Thor In 1957, an alien named Commander Valiant Thor came to Earth demanding to speak with President Dwight D. Eisenhower. After meeting with the President, Vice President Richard Nixon, and the Joint Chiefs, he stayed on Earth for three years working with top scientists and government officials while living in the Pentagon. Valiant Thor, the alien visitor, arrived on Earth from the planet Venus. With a humanoid appearance, he looked just like us. His mission is to help humanity advance and avoid destruction. Thor spent three years among humans, working closely with government officials. He shared knowledge of advanced technology and peaceful ways of living. Thor's presence raised eyebrows, but his intentions were noble. He showed no signs of hostility, only a desire to assist. Many were skeptical, yet some believed in his message of hope. His teachings emphasized love, unity, and cooperation among nations. Despite his otherworldly origins, Thor displayed compassion and understanding towards humanity's struggles. He became a symbol of unity, inspiring people to strive for a better world. However, as mysteriously as he arrived, Thor eventually departed leaving behind a legacy of peace and goodwill. Number 3. Yuri Geller Israeli illusionist known for his claims of psychic abilities, including telepathic communication with extraterrestrial beings. Yuri Geller, a famous Israeli entertainer, became well known for his supposed psychic abilities. Born in 1946, he gained international attention in the 1970s for his demonstrations of telekinesis and psychokinesis which he claimed were the result of his extraordinary mental powers. Geller claimed he could bend spoons and keys with the power of his mind alone, often performing these feats on television shows and in public appearances. Despite skepticism from scientists and skeptics who suggested his tricks could be attributed to sleight of hand or other conventional methods, Geller maintained a large following of believers who were fascinated by his supposed abilities. His demonstrations sparked both curiosity and controversy, with some admirers hailing him as a genuine psychic, while others dismissed him as a mere illusionist. Number 2. Linda Moulton Howe Linda Moulton Howe is a respected investigative journalist known for her work in the fields of ufology and environmental science. With over four decades of experience, she has gained recognition for her dedication to uncovering mysteries and presenting her findings in documentaries, books, and lectures. Howe's interest in unidentified flying objects, UFOs, began in the late 1970s when she produced a documentary about cattle mutilations. Since then, she has delved into various aspects of the UFO phenomenon, including government secrecy and alleged extraterrestrial contact. In addition to her work in ufology, Howe has explored environmental issues, particularly those related to animal mutilations and their possible connections to unknown forces. She has investigated reports of strange animal deaths and anomalies in different parts of the world, aiming to shed light on these perplexing occurrences. Throughout her career, Linda Moulton Howe has maintained a rigorous approach to her investigations, relying on evidence-based research and interviews with experts. Her contributions to the fields of ufology and environmental science have earned her a reputation as a thorough and insightful journalist dedicated to uncovering the truth behind some of the world's most intriguing mysteries. Number 1. Simone Parks Simone Parks is a notable figure known for his claims about extraterrestrial encounters and involvement in politics. Born in England, he gained attention for his assertions of being in contact with alien beings since childhood. Parks has stated that he communicates telepathically with these beings, whom he refers to as mantids and reptilians. Aside from his extraterrestrial claims, Parks has been involved in political activities. Simone Parks ran for political office in the UK as an independent candidate, advocating for transparency and accountability in government. However, his political endeavors have been met with limited success. 
Parks has garnered a following among those interested in conspiracy theories and the paranormal. He has appeared on various media platforms to discuss his experiences and theories about extraterrestrial life and government secrecy. Thank you for watching. Check out another interesting video by clicking on the link appearing on your screen right now. See you on the other side.